Hello and welcome to the Live Your Own Fit podcast. My name is Jamie L. Jacobs and I'm very excited to introduce you to our guest today, Nina Anderson. Nina is a graduate from our 12-week program, Life School for Health and Lifestyle Change. And she has been inspiring her friends and families for the past 12 weeks. It's time for her to inspire you too. So Nina is going to share her story of how she went from feeling fatigued, overweight, and living a very sedentary lifestyle to now feeling at a high level of energy, um, losing a ton of weight and feeling the best she has in her 55 years. So stay tuned now to learn just how Nina made that change she's been searching for for all these decades. Enjoy. Well, welcome to the show, Nina. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you. So thank you very much. I know how busy you are. So making the time for us at Live Your Own Fit and everybody else is just a real, real treat. Um, I'll just let everyone know very, very quickly, briefly who you are. Nina is a graduate of the Live Your Own Fit um, 12-week program. <laughs> and we're very, very, very proud of Nina. Um, She's a newfound friend and um, we just wanted to share Nina's story with everyone because we really think it will inspire um, you to make a change, but also just give you a little one percenter of information that might help you on your way. Um, so yeah, I'd like to give you a very, very warm welcome, Nina, and thank you for being here. Thanks, Jamie. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. <laughs> Awesome. So just to, um, in some brief words, are you able just to let everyone know what your biggest changes have been over the past 12 weeks or so? Um, so I have a lot of, uh, uh, well, a couple of big changes, I guess. My, I think my biggest change um, is my outlook, my perspective on my health and well-being. Um, it really has more to do with how I feel on the inside rather than how I look on the outside. And that was one of the biggest changes for me over the last um, 12 or so weeks working with you. Um, really being able to grasp that it's not about shrinking down to from a size 14 to a size two, but really about just learning how to be happy with who I am and um, developing some of those really good habits. Awesome. Great. And when, when you say, um, I know it wasn't about body composition, it's about um, how you were feeling. That was a really, really big focus. Um, how do you think you were feeling before to how you feel now? So before I was uh, very sluggish, um, very tired. I was tired all the time. If you ask me, how are you today? I would always, uh, well, I have a, I have a pretty, um, I, w I would say I'm fine, but really I would be feeling tired all the time. And I was tired when I went to bed and I was tired when I woke up and I wasn't sleeping well. Mm -hmm. And now um, I, I get up in the morning and I'm not tired. I don't have, I'm not craving coffee during the afternoon for a pick me up. I just feel good. I feel awake. I feel healthy and my, I feel happy. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And do you think that your confidence has grown a lot too? In yeah, my confidence has definitely grown. Um, definitely some of the um, mantras that, that you worked with me on, those have really helped. Um, had a lot of big things, like everybody else in the world, had a lot of big things happen. Um, I work in a school district and really had to make some huge changes over the last 10 weeks and I, I'm not sure how I would have done it in my old state of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that, um, you sort of up leveled your whole focus and your ability to dial in on exactly what you're doing. So you're far more efficient at work as well. And you're able to manage any sort of anxiety that comes up with everything that's happening in the world. Um, and yeah, everything else in between. So Excellent. Sure. And are you able to share with um, the audience just how much like weight you have actually lost? So I am at, so it depends on the particular second because <laughs> when I first step on the scale, I have lost 20 pounds even. 
but then when I step on the scale for longer than one second, I've lost 19 pounds, but I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I was fine with 15 pounds. The extra is bonus. Really, um, it's not even about how much weight I've lost, right? Yeah. Um, I went in and, and I think that I measured when we first started, I think I measured at 39 and a half around my waist. waist. Does that sound right? Yes, that was right. Yeah. Yep. And so I measured right before we came on the air and I am at 35 and a quarter. Wow. That is amazing. So I think that's pretty significant. That's, um, that is massive, massive. Cause I remember the other day as well. Um, well, I'll just caveat that with um, letting everyone know that Nina and I never focused on the weight um, throughout this whole um, no. journey. And I, I really don't like scales and I don't like people having to ask um, people to weigh themselves. I come from a family background where there has been issues around weight. Um, so I'm really mindful of that. It just creates another stress. And I always say, find someone you don't like and give them your, your scales <laughs> because it has a whole bunch of issues um, that stem from that. Um, so Nina and I were never focused on that, but it's just a really good um, result for us to sort of acknowledge because it lets everyone know that perhaps with inflammation and stress and anxiety and different lifestyle habits, we can put on weight that really doesn't serve us. Um, and Nina has lost a considerable amount of weight and it's changed the way she's feeling. So health and fitness really go hand in hand. You just can't have one without the other. So that's just why we're talking about Nina's, Nina's weight. <laughs> and, we're, and we're dog lovers too. I, I think so. <laughs> I think that's a treat to hear a dog barking is a real treat. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry. not don't be silly. Um, I'm wearing these headphones, Nina, because um, I, I know our dogs are going to bark. So I was like, I'll wear the headphones because then I can't actually hear my dogs barking. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, hopefully Charlie will hear and, and come yeah. out so. Um, so uh, with, the, with the weight thing as well, um, we obviously didn't focus on that, but I think it's important to let everyone know about it. Um, were there any other changes? I know your waist circumference, um, that changed and we'll be going shopping for some new clothes because we need new clothes. Um, but any, was there anything else that you can think of? Like, uh, Can we talk about my belly? Yes, if you're comfortable, I would love to. Let's, let's talk about the, the bulbous <laughs> belly, shall we? <laughs> I love it. You, I know I, I learned the term from you, doughy belly. Yeah, it was, it's, it was, it was like a, the, so you know how in, in quarantine, everybody has been cooking these loaves of sourdough bread, right? And they cook them in a, in a cast iron pot usually, and they have this, they're big and round and absolutely gorgeous yeah, that's what my belly reminds me of, or it did. Not now. <laughs> what, Not does it, now. what does it remind you of now? Um, now it reminds me, uh, well, to me, in my perspective, it's almost flat. Yeah. Like I, right. in fact, I've always had, I think, I think you and I talked a lot about this whole belly issue and um, real, I think one of the things that I learned from you is how much food impacts our insides right mm. and how the food can inflame what's going on inside the body and swelling is an inflammation so while yes it definitely had or and it still does obviously but um had a, some layering of, of fat in it i think some of it or, or a great deal of it was inflammation coming from those foods that are fast to cook um, you know, we all live it, that busy lifestyle, right? But um, really buckling down and saying, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and from just leading on from that, you, you don't crave, like before we met, um, I, we were maybe craving some sweet foods. Um, we were at work. Working and salty. Really yeah, and anything. Salt, yeah. <laughs> anything sort of like processed. Um, yeah. And now you've got total food freedom. So, so food doesn't give you anxiety in a sense because you feel like you can, 
you can eat what you want because you're eating really fresh produce the majority of the time. And then when there is things like you had your friend's wedding um, and there's going to be cake and wine, um, you can let loose and eat it and not feel bad because you're so metabolically efficient the rest of the time. Yes. Um, I used to have to take a tagamet. I don't know if you have ta like a, a medicine for indigestion. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, um, I didn't know that. Okay. I used to have to take that every night when I would go to bed. Was that for like I, reflux? Or? It was just because I had such terrible indigestion from whatever stuff I was putting in my body. And I, I, in fact, I have like two boxes of 50 tablets because I would always make sure that I had it because I didn't want to run out because it would make sleeping miserable. I don't, I, I haven't taken that, I guess, gosh, since December. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Mm -hmm. And was there anything else that you were taking that you're not taking anymore? Or is that the, that's the only, that's the only, um, like medicine? Well, um, I was, I mean, I would take Tylenol, you know, because my joints would hurt yeah. or Advil, yeah. you know, like a analgesic for, yeah. for my joints. I, I mean, I could show you my fingers now, but that doesn't mean anything because yeah. you don't have a comparison, but I had knots in my knuckles and while there's a few, it's not nearly what it was before. My fingers wow. don't hurt. Um, my, my joints don't ache anymore, Amazing. you know, and I think it's, it's that, that, and I don't want to say it was a focus on food because that mm. doesn't sound right, but it was just being more intuitive about what I was consuming. Yeah, definitely. And, and saying that the muscle fatigue and the joint, um, like soreness and aches and pains has gone is amazing because we actually loaded up your joints mm -hmm. <laughs> these last um, 12 weeks. So um, would you mind sharing Nina, what your goal coming into this last um, period of time actually was? So I really wanted to run a 5k and I wanted to lose the belly and I wanted to lose what I called bat wings on my arms um, and I wanted to be healthy and set and um, be a good role model for my children and for my grandchildren. So, um, I ran a 5k, albeit it was virtual, but through no fault of anybody, just the way it was, but I did run it and I got a medal. Um, I am feeling amazing. My tummy, like I said, has gone down. I still have some bat wing, but you know what? I earned that bat wing. <laughs> I love and also, that. that's gravity. Um, but I have muscle. See, there's a little muscle right there. It, you're only 12 weeks in. There's a lot more so, to go. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and that comes from the workouts that, you know, are, that, that you sent me that are so, um, they're so, tailored to my abilities. Like you understand I have a bad knee and I can't, um, there's nothing I can do about the bad knee. And so making sure that I take care of that at, at the same time as I'm taking care of myself. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So looking at things like magnesium, um, Nina, before we started, I, I don't think you were supplementing with um, no. like electrolytes. So not having the sodium that Nina really, um, needed to have when you're doing workouts and when you stop eating processed food often we lose a lot of the sodium in those you know those crackers and those breads so we do need to make sure we're diligent with our sodium consumption and magnesium um, and there's a ton more but we just like it keep it simple um, Nina's eating so so well um, that we really didn't need to supplement with much else outside of that um, but yeah doing the magnesium soak I think it was and the orange mm -hmm. magnesium yeah. So, and then also the vitamin D. Yes. Vitamin D. So, yes. And that's really all I'm doing. Yeah. And a probiotic, the probiotic at night. That's it. Yeah. So, um, and I, and I feel great. I still have my coffee in the morning. Yes. With a splash of cream because who wants to drink black coffee? Yeah. I do too. And, um, I mean, I'm just, I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. And 
just thankful for you um, helping me along through this journey. I'm thankful for you, Nina. Um, could we just let everyone know, I know I sort of bang on a lot of the time with what our why is and connecting the why <laughs> to what we're doing, because I feel like, um, as you know, with um, how you work um, at work too, is you've really got to have a strong why behind what your goal is. Um, and I know your why is very closely related to your family as well. Um, so you're a grandma as well yep. as a mum and a wife and a full-time worker. Um, so you really wanted to be able to create a ripple effect going into this as well. Um, can you just let us know what that ripple effect looked like i know that you went shopping with your daughter for um runners um yep. i know your son's an ironman um yes. athlete that i've worked with in the past um and also let us know how you've had a ripple effect with your husband as well so actually i think the ripple starts with my son he's the one who who connected us right yes. um and just because he knew that um, I was very interested in the changes in his body that were he was undergoing. And of course, he's, you know, obviously much younger than I am. Um, but we talked a lot about it. And um, he's, he talked about the inflammation diet. And so he said, if you go on there, mom, then, um, then we'll see about connecting you with Jamie. And so I did it and it was, it was hard the first week. Um, I tried to get my daughter on board, but she's got three little ones at home and, and now is not the time mm. for her to do that. It's not, it's not a really good time for her. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm watching Nicholas um, as he works towards his Ironman and, um, and I'm watching my daughter as she's trying to make some better health decisions without me saying are you sure you want to eat that? You know, she, okay. because she sees what, what I'm doing and she sees what we're eating and what we're not eating. Mm -hmm. And then my, my grandchildren are the same way when they come here, you know, they see, I still do have treats for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll always offer them something healthy before I'm going to offer them a, some M&Ms or, or whatever. Um, but also because I am not a cafeteria, I am not going to cook two meals and so um as a result my husband has gone on this journey with me as well and he wasn't very happy about it but actually now he's thrilled because he's gone down two pant sizes wow i had i can't say how many pant sizes i've gone down because um i haven't put on a real pair of pants in 12 weeks that no in 10 weeks really um so I'm just waiting for that. Um, but we went yesterday because he goes back to work this week and um, found out that he'd gone down two pant sizes. He's feeling much better. He suffers from um, arthritis. It's a um, autoimmune arthritis. I don't know if there's different kinds. Anyway, mm. and he is feeling much better. His joints don't hurt as much. Um, he doesn't get headaches like he used to. Overall, he's just feeling much better and he looks much better. So, um, and alongside the nutrition and what we're putting into our bodies, we're also moving. Mm, yes. And, um, I, I, you know, my big goal was to run a 5K. And so I did that, but now almost three, maybe four nights a week, we, I will run, and by, I have to, I have to really be honest. I don't actually run the whole 5K. And well, I know that 3.14 miles or 3.1 miles is not that far for athletes. Um, for me, it, it's far. And so I do what I call rewalk. So that's the run walk. Yeah. Um, but when I go with Charlie, we walk and we always try to increase our pace a little bit on, on how quickly we walk. And we normally go between three and four miles every evening. Wow. So from going, yeah, going from, I know when we first started, you literally, when you filled out the questionnaire, you had written, um, when we asked how much training you've been doing, you said uh, zero, zero training. And um, the longest run or longest walk that you had done was a half mile walk. 
Um, but you sort of made a funny little comment at the end of that half mile walk. So that is just phenomenal. Like you're now, you should be very, very proud, Nina. And it, five, um, five kilometers is a long way um, for it's, you know, what we've worked on as well um, this last 12 weeks Nina and I is the comparison syndrome. A lot of us will always be comparing and putting ourselves down and Nina has stopped doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Apart from that, just that little bit of comment there, but um, Nina's stopped doing that. Um, and the self troll talk has really stopped as well. Um, but what was really interesting for me to see as well, because I'm learning through you too all the time um, is that we actually don't know that we've got self talk happening, that self trolling talk, unless somebody asks us um, and then we start working on ourselves and building up that muscle because we've got to train our, our subconscious to work for us again, to give us a positive self-talk. Um, are you able just to give us an insight into your self-trolling talk that you did have, Nina? So I, it's interesting that you asked that because if you had asked me um, what was the hardest part about this, to me, that's the hardest part, mm. right? is to, um, to, to tell you what, the, what my inside voice is saying, right? Um, and that, that self-troll talk that, and we talked a little bit about the um, imposter syndrome yes. and how it's actually a real thing. And um, so give, you know, giving me those tools that I need in order to be able to um, sort of squelch down the ideas, those thoughts in my head that I'm not going to be good enough. I can't accomplish this. Um, there's everybody else is, is more capable and better at either work or um, health choices, um, my move choices. It, mm. I think that it's easy to get into that cycle, but it's really, really hard to face it. Mm. And, and that to me, um, when I would fill out the questionnaire after we would um, visit, that was always the one that took me the longest mm. because it's like, you don't really want to say all of the things that you've been telling yourself yes. because they're yes. not things that you would say to a friend. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yeah. So it's almost like, how can you expect your body to be working for you and you be emitting this amazing energy out to the world? So you do attract the, you know, the like-minded people into your life. Um, when you're literally telling yourself, you don't deserve any of that. You don't deserve a body that takes care of you. You don't deserve the loving relationships that you attract into your life. Um, it's just impossible. Um, yeah. So I know that you, I know that you've started even more so than before because you're such a beautiful person inside and out. You had started attracting really good energy and really good things, um, towards you even more so now. Um, but just to give everyone a bit of insight into Nina as well, what we did, um, in Nina's journey first up is really work on our mindset and our vision and what we want to achieve and just get really clear and focused on that. And then we did an elimination protocol with our eating. Um, but it, it wasn't that hard for Nina to, uh, to do. Um, and she got amazing results first up. And then we reintroduced some foods um, that Nina reacted really well to. Um, so ultimately, it is a real food um, way of eating. Nina's not keto. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, you probably are low carb, but it depend, would depend on what day. Um, I'd say the focus really is on real food and try and uh, emit as much of the processed food as possible. Nina um, still has wine um, each night. <laughs> and the fighties, the cheese. Um, yeah, but definitely tries to stay away from the, yeah, the processed sugary glutinous type food um, that most of the population is eating. <laughs> Um, I think my my food success story is um, when the restaurant quarantines lifted and we could order to pick up from a restaurant. Um, we, my husband and I, in the past have really enjoyed Mexican food um, every week, where we would have gooey, um, probably fake cheese, um, 
enchiladas and all kinds of things that were probably really terrible for us. But and it wasn't even that, but they always come with a side of tortilla chips. Yes. And um, so there's nothing, you know, in the past, there was nothing like dipping those tortilla chips in a, in a bowl of nacho cheese, which I don't, it's like a big bowl of melted cheese. Yeah. And um, picked it up and neither one of us had any desire to bite into one of those chips. So we, and in fact, what we did have was um, just some grilled chicken, which honestly, <laughs> we paid a lot for grilled chicken that we could have just done at yeah. home, but it was just, we don't have to cook. But did you get to have a margarita? Did you order a yeah, margarita? Yeah, we did. We had a margarita, but I didn't even finish yeah. it Oh no. so, because they use a, they use like a syrup. Uh, and so it, it tasted super sweet and Charlie and I can make a margarita here with real limes mm. and tequila and we don't need all of the, mm. the sugar in it. So, um, it was funny because it, what we used to love, Oh, let's go and have a margarita. It just it's not, doesn't happen now. Yeah. Doesn't nope. do, it, do it. Doesn't do it for you now. Nope. Um, so Nina, why do you think that you like, this is now a new lifestyle for you um why do you think that in the past because i know you've tried different things in the past um to help with energy and weight and everything else um why do you think this is such an easy sort of change for you or it, i know it wasn't easy but easy to adapt to and to keep doing um <laughs> because there there is a i think that that there's a more than one answer to that. Part of it is, and I'm, I'm going to use the word accountable, mm -hmm. um, but generally when you say accountable, that means that if you don't do something that you're accountable for, there's a, there's a consequence and that, that's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. But it was um, like you were a partner, like an accountability partner, right? So there was that aspect of it. Um, the, the coaching that was very, very tailored to me. I think I've told you this before. Mm. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at your logo right now that's right behind you that says live your own fit. And um, it really, it dawned on me just recently that really that's what this has been about is it's, it's not a program that's a one size fits all. It was very, um, and it's not even a program. It was, um, it was like a, a, like resources and coaching and tools um, for my own best version of myself, mm. right? Um, and so, what what worked for me may or may not work for another one of your clients, but I don't ever feel like you. Um, ever tried to pigeonhole me into something you we would talk and you would listen and um, through questioning and asking a lot of questions um, come out with with um, really what was going to best suit my needs awesome yeah so it's a long term and you're able to stick to it long term because it's easy lifestyle changes you're not counting macronutrients and saying I had X amount of carbs today. I had X amount. Well, we always try and prioritize our protein um, because we want to create lean muscle mass and everything that goes into that. But we're definitely not focusing on the amount of calories that we're eating um, because that's stressful. Um, everyone's very different, but that's just not true food freedom um, or freedom. Oh, and I mean, and I watch the, it really, um, I pretty much eliminated anything, any white foods, yep. you know, and, um, other than, I don't actually, I don't even think I have had anything, any white foods. Um, yep. but I, I mean, I'm not zero carb. I'm not, I don't count them at all. I'm not counting macros. I think we had talked about that early on and how I just, I felt like that. I just cannot, I don't have time for that. I'm, I just simply don't. Um, and, and it I takes don't the fun have, out of it, the fun out of it, eating and being with people that you love. It does. It yeah. absolutely does. 100%. I will say that um, you mentioned the wedding. So that was my, um, 
best friend's daughter's wedding and went and had cake and it was delicious, but it still didn't, my taste buds had already changed. Mm. And so it, there was nothing that the cake satisfied anymore. Yeah. 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 And we just did a couple of things the next day to mitigate mitigate you feeling awful the next day from eating that um, amount of sugar and drinking when your body's not used to it. Um, and you were absolutely fine. Yeah. 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 I was, that was the bone broth day. Oh, those were the days of the chicken feet bone broth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> chicken paws. <laughs> Did not drink any of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's for the next podcast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, so Nina, with your, like, I know you had a few big aha moments throughout the past months. Um, is there one or two like big aha moments that you feel if you had heard those aha moments from someone, maybe like, I know you did from Nick, your son, um, which is why we're here today. But like years ago, if you heard someone say these, um, like this bit of advice or wisdom or experience, um, that might have changed, maybe might have started you on this track a bit earlier. Um, do you know what, do you have any advice or the letting everyone know what one or two aha moments would be? You have to have um, someone in your corner. When you want to make a big change in your life, like I did, and, and I do consider this a big change. Mm. Um, it's, it's very, I, I think, no, I know from experience, it's impossible to do it alone. You have to have somebody um, with you who is knowledgeable about your journey and about what's, what's, um, what's best and how to achieve your particular goal. And um, I think that if somebody had told me that five or 10 years ago, mm. I, I know the importance of coaching and in, in my profession and we have coaches that work alongside te teachers, but um, I, I guess I never really wrapped my head around having somebody um, going along this health journey with me as a coach, mm. a human, yes. not an app. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love because it. I, I, I mean, I, and I think that's the, you know, we, we had our regular, talks and um, sometimes we would meet weekly, but lately we've been doing every other week, but I always would look forward to those because I knew, um, I never prepped for them because I, I mean, I, don't, I just didn't, um, but I knew that we were gonna be able to, uh, I knew that you were gonna be able to root out anything going on. <laughs> Yeah. And then I knew that you were going to, at the end of the session, I always looked forward to um, Nina filling out like a post-session worksheet because uh, Nina came up with the ahas um, through our sessions, but every single time Nina was just so in tune um, with her body and her mind and what stage she was up to and what she had to work on next. Um, so that was really nice for me to see each time as well. Um, what do you think is next for you, Nina, you in, in, in terms of your health and wellness and fitness journey? Um, so I'm, I'm going to continue living my healthy lifestyle. It's, it's not a diet. Um, I don't call it a diet. I, I would really, really like to rewalk a 10K. Excellent. I'm, I have to still wrap my head around that one, yeah. but for my shorter term goal, I have a 50 mile goal for the month of May. So today is the um, 18th here. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm just over 30 miles for my May goal. So Excellent. Really, as I look towards um, the upcoming months, it's going to get hotter here. Mm. Um, I'm, and so any, anything that I do is going to be done in the mornings, mm. um, but I really want to stick with my 50 miles a month. And then I'd really like to, in November, December, um, do a 10K. Exciting. And then hopefully by then we can be outside doing 10Ks. 
Right. Things, exactly. Things might have changed. It won't be a virtual 10K. It, it might be a, a real virtual one. one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it yeah. might be a real one. <laughs> Excellent. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with myself and the audience before we wrap it up? No, just my untying, undying gratitude toward you and all of the work that you've done with me to help me um, as I move to a healthier version of myself. Yeah. Um, not something that I could have done alone. I've, I've tried to do it for the last, I don't know, I'm 55 now. So I've probably tried to do it for at least the last 25, 30 years. Wow. That's, yeah, that's just... I can't tell you how much that means. That's incredible. And I'm so thankful for you. I feel like, um, you know, I've got a lifelong friend now, if you like it or not. Mm -hmm. Nina. <laughs> oh, good. So good. I, yeah, I love it. And um, I think it's also really important to share Nina's story is I think the biggest win isn't about, um, and Nina will say this as well about the loss of inflammation, which is the loss of weight. Um, and having a body you love and not wearing Spanx to wedding and able to wear like your white shirt tucked into high-waisted jeans, that's all fabulous. Um, but the biggest thing I got out of that is, the biggest thing I got out of Nina's journey is we actually were able to acknowledge the, um, I suppose, the thought habits that weren't doing us any good the past, um, I don't know, 30 odd years. Um, and we were able to to change it around and make what we think of ourselves actually work for us um, and give us the energy that we need. And that is so, so, so important because now Nina's going to um, yeah, emit the energy that she deserves and have the people and the love and everything in her life that she deserves. Um, yeah. And that's just a side note to the health and fitness journey. I suppose that's the wellness part of it. Um, but that's very much, I think, the foundation to everything that Nina's achieved is really getting your head, head and mindset um, working for you because when that happens and your health and fitness improves, anything is truly, truly possible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to yeah, seeing everything that's in store for you, Nina, um, going forward. I know everyone, a lot of people at your workplace has made comments. Um, I know your son-in-law and your son and your daughter <laughs> have made comments and I love them <laughs> as well. Um, and I'm really, really grateful to your husband, um, Charlie as well for being on the journey with you. Cause I still remember the first time we had our session together and he was next to you. Um, and, now, for him to take on board everything that you're doing is phenomenal. So I, I do think it's really hard for one person in a relationship to make a change and make it sustainable and be happy through that journey if the other person isn't there being a real good sidekick and a supporter as well. Um, so, yeah, I thank him as well. It's, it's great. Yep. For sure. Thank you so Thanks much, Jenny. I, I appreciate all the work that you've put into me. <laughs> Me too, Nina. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time and thank you, Nina. Thanks, Jamie. So if you had any questions on anything mentioned today or you would like to discover how you can make a change to your health and fitness, please reach out to Pete and myself at liveyourownfit.com. Shoot us an email at hello at liveyourownfit.com or send us a direct message over our social handles live your own, at liveyourownfit. We'd love to help you. So jump on a free discovery call today to find out how you can make a change that might just change your life and the loved ones around you. I look forward to speaking to you next time and we'll see you soon.